They're a wild card, these Montreal Canadiens. With all the changes they've made, they're an unknown quantity. Montreal made the most of its opportunity when it was one of eight teams on the outside of the NHL playoff picture looking in when it came to the qualifying round in the bubble playoffs. It was there the Canadians knocked off the Pittsburgh Penguins to advance to round one of the playoffs proper. It was there when they bowed out to the Philadelphia Flyers in six games. They were given a lifeline. They were they were a 500 hockey team that had no business being in the playoffs and, and they took that opportunity and, and, and they ran with it. They were playing with house money and they did the most of that. There, they, there was no pressure on Montreal because a lot of teams said you shouldn't even be in this play-in tournament. You shouldn't be allowed to be compete in this tournament. But they were, and they took took advantage of it. And I think that's a team that's rebuilding, but also a little bit like Vancouver. They're probably further along than a lot of people expected. And that playoff stretch is huge when it comes to gaining experience. How you perform in the playoffs is a really good indicator of, of what the core of your team is like, what your character is like, and what the fundamentals are. You start from goaltending out to defense and you know they have some really good pieces there. Like they're they're a scrappy team that, that plays hard. But consider that the Habs less than a month before the season was paused had been in sell-off mode, trading away the likes of Ilya Kovalchuk, Nick Cousins, and Marco Scandella, who all would have been useful in the playoffs instead of the clutch of picks that came back to the team. And Canadians GM Mark Bergevin was busy in the summer, acquiring Josh Anderson from the Columbus Blue Jackets for Max Domi, also acquiring Jake Allen from the St. Louis Blues to back up goalie Carey Price, and picking up ex-Kings winger Tyler Toffoli, who will be very useful adding scoring punch to the forward lineup. I think Bergevin's made more moves than, than most team, most GMs. I think they're better, they're bigger, they try to get more bigger players. Josh Anderson for Domi you know, is the one that stands out for me. Price bounced back last year. Getting Jake Allen from St. Louis gives them a better goaltender tandem than they've, they've had. You don't have to work overwork price. I think they're better. Now, whether that was just a short-term thing or not in the playoffs, that's going to be decided. Can they do that over a 60 or 82-game season? That's going to be decided. So. so it's a very different Habs team than we saw before the pause, and one that could surprise a lot of people in the Canadian division. They've been small and skilled before, but now I think they're still skilled, and they have some good young players at center with Nick Suzuki and, and Kat Kanyemi, two very young centers coming. I think they're every bit as good as the Oilers in, in Toronto to me. Maybe a cut, just a cut below them, but not, not a whole lot different. I think they've still got enough pieces to be competitive every night. Are they going to be a team that can can legitimately say is a Stanley Cup threat? I don't think so. But even with a with an average team last year, they beat the Penguins in the playoff first round of the playoffs. There's a lot of pride when you play for Montreal, right? Like it's you go into that building and it's it's a tough place to win because the the atmosphere is so energetic. I don't know what it would be like playing in Montreal with nobody in the house. Maybe it's just like any other rink, or will it still have that mystique that can sometimes get to. Uh, get to an opponent but you know they've, they've made they've made a bunch of moves they're an aggressive team but while the Oilers primary threat is on offense it's the back end that's the Canadians calling card goalie Carey Price is one of the NHL's best goalies and captain Shea Weber is a rock on defense they still have world-class goaltender and Carey Price but they realized they went and got him some help so they got him Jake Allen and I think now they're spending a lot of money in goal so they don't have a lot of offense they their offense is by committee they don't have that 70, 80 point guy that's going to get him a lot of offense. I think uh, I think their top guy was Thomas Tatar with 61 points this last year. So I think they, 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 they're going to have to score by committee, but they're going to have to be a solid defensive team. And that had starts with Shea Weber. Is he still the Shea Weber of a few years ago where he was the, one of the best defensemen in the league? Probably not, but there's still a lot there for him to, to, to be a strong, solid defenseman, a strong contributor. I think there's still some holes that the Canadians have. They still some deficiencies in that lineup. They're not going to score a lot of goals for you. And I think that's one of the issues with Montreal right now is where are they going to find that scoring? Because on the back end, they're pretty good. In goaltending, they're pretty good. But scoring is going to be an issue for that hockey team, I think, this year. Mm -hmm.